Hey guys, I'm Siobhan, an internal medicine and rheumatology specialist. Today, we're heading to the pathology department, a really important part of medicine that's rarely seen. I like to think of it like the medical version of CSI, where the pathology team are looking for medical criminals like bacteria and cancers that are causing disease. Today, we're at the cancer center, and there's one question I'm really hoping to answer for you guys, and that's, why do you have to wait for weeks anxiously after surgery before you get your final pathology results? Welcome to the pathology lab. Come on in and see what we're up to today. We just found out that a fresh specimen has been dropped off. It's a breast specimen and we need to stop what we're doing right now and go and take care of it right away. Okay, perfect. The woman in the operating room was diagnosed with breast cancer after a routine mammogram. The good news is that it's small and because she was getting regular breast cancer screening, it was caught early. Such a small cancer that can't be seen or felt can be hard for a surgeon to find. That's why a tiny piece of radioactive metal is inserted beside the lump before surgery. Think of it like a beacon guiding the surgeon to remove the area with cancer. And we'll learn more about this later in the video. Something unique about breast cancer tissue is that it needs to be processed within one hour. So as the porter drops off the specimen from the OR, the clock is ticking. The first step is putting the tissue in formalin, which is a chemical preservative. It has a really distinct smell that just instantly transports me back to the anatomy lab. Okay, we've got formula on the specimen, but now we need to paint it and cut it and find the seed. Now Janice shows us her artistic skills as she paints each side of the specimen with a different color. These colors will permanently dye the tissue. It's like creating a map for anyone who's going to look at the tissue in the future. For example, if there are cancer cells near the red side, we'll know there's cancer that needs to be removed at the lower border of where they operated. The next step is finding that radioactive piece of metal using a special probe that detects the radiation. We're just getting Wanda. Okay, we have to have a sense of humor here. We have our 2 d 2 other thing and we call our neoprobe Wanda. And Wanda gets very excited the closer that we get to the seed. So, <laughs> starts off low. And that's sort of like bingo. When you hear it beeping like that, we know that we're the closest that we possibly can be to the seed. And this is also how the surgeons detect the metal in the operating room. I can definitely see why they affectionately call it R2-D2. <laughs> Janice finds the radioactive metal. And it's amazing how small it is. Next, Janice meets with Dr. Salehi, the staff pathologist, and they discuss the best approach to dissect and divide up the specimen. The spot on biopsy was uh, invasive duct hole grade one. So 2.2 centimeter or 2.1 centimeter unifocal mass, no calcs. Should okay. be pretty much a routine specimen. Okay. So now Janice gets to work measuring and documenting before cutting the tissue into small sections that are placed into little containers. These containers are then sent to a different lab where they're turned into slides that can be read under a microscope. So that's where we're heading next to find out how it's done. All right, so in this lab, the goal is to prepare the sample so that it can be examined on a microscopic level. First, this machine washes out the formalin and soaks the specimen in wax. Next, Christina encases the sample within a wax block. These blocks can be stored for decades which allows doctors to run more tests on the tissue to help patients or to do future research. Christina then uses a specialized machine to create thin slices that are two to four microns thick. That's tiny, even smaller than a cell's nucleus. Then using a water bath, she makes it look easy as she picks them up on individual slides. Next is the staining process. There are many types of stains that are used to color different structures within the cell. And you choose the stains you want based on the type of tissue you have and the type of disease you're looking for. But these days, most slides are processed by an automatic stainer. Staining slides is a really time-consuming process. Here, you can see how the machine works. 
dunking the slides into various chemicals one at a time. The last step is putting a protective cover slip on top, and that's it! A beautiful slide that probably reminds you of science class. I've always thought these slides are strangely beautiful, and that it's hard to believe that we all look like this on a cellular level. So in the end, the pathologist gets all of the different pieces of the puzzle to put it together and make a final diagnosis. In this case, Dr. Salehi reviews the slides under the microscope, along with all the notes and diagrams that Janice created. Sometimes what the pathologist sees leads them to more questions, so they order more tests to make an accurate diagnosis. Each test means slicing more tissue, making another slide, and applying different stains. This all takes time, and it's one of the reasons it can take weeks before patients get their final pathology results. Okay, so I've, I've got to ask, I'm sure people are wondering, did you feel kind of squeamish and like nervous when you were working with tissue from humans? I think we try and keep in mind that we've got a job to do and we're thinking about the patient that's at the other end of mm -hmm. that specimen and so we keep that in mind and it's easy to sort of separate the two things and stick to the task at hand. Okay, that, that actually makes a lot of sense to me because if I'm doing a procedure on someone, it might cause them some discomfort, but you know it's to get them an answer, to get them feeling better in the end. Right. So you kind of have to separate, it's right? The same, it's the same idea. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Care. See you next time. So I know many of you are probably wondering, what happened to the patient? Is she all right? And I don't actually know. And that's part of working in the pathology department. You're part of a critical point in patient care but then you don't continue to follow them throughout their journey. But I do want to wish this patient the very best in her recovery from surgery and her battle with cancer. I want to take this moment to really emphasize the importance of breast cancer screening. Did you know that one in eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer in their lifetime? That's a huge number. It means that every two minutes, a woman in the United States is diagnosed, which is why we have to talk about it. The majority of these women are over the age of 50, so if that's you, make sure you're getting screened. If that's not you, then think about your mom, sister, aunt, and friends who are, and check in with them about prevention. And if you have multiple relatives who've had breast cancer, then chat with your doctor to find out your personal risk and if you should be getting additional genetic testing. Now, this isn't meant to scare you. In fact, when breast cancer is caught early, the survival rate is really high. Which is why I'll say it again, cancer screening is key. And that's a wrap. I am thrilled. I've learned so much about different areas of medicine that I've never been exposed to. So I want to give a huge thank you to Janice, Candice, Dr. Salehi, and of course the entire pathology department for making this possible. So if you want to see more videos like this, check out this playlist that's full of videos where I shadow different allied health professionals. Be sure to subscribe and that way I'll see you in the next video. So bye for now.